everyone. Welcome to South Mountain Online Classes. My name is Becky, the Outdoor Center Director. I have some animal friends with me today to help me discuss habitats. Um, habitat basics. There's a lot to say about habitats, but we're going to take it slow. We'll wait for a couple of people to join us here at our new time at 4 o'clock. Um, Shadow is the black rat snake you see curling around this stick in front of me. And uh, make sure, let me know if you can hear me. There you go, Shadow. Just be right there. Look at that. It's such a picture if he like actually holds hold still, but uh, he's going to be moving. I'm going to be catching him all the whole time, so bear with me with that. Um, Shadow is our black rat snake here at camp. We have a couple more animals with me today to help discuss habitats. Uh, we have in this lovely bowl of grass and uh, clover, uh, we have Donatello, our, there he is, Shadow, Donatello, our little baby three-toed box turtle, isn't he cute? He's going to go back in here until it's his time to shine. And then next to me, I don't know if you can hear it, but someone's making a lot of thumping noises in the bin next to me, and that's Shelly. Our painted turtle. Say hi, Shelly. Hi, Shelly. She doesn't like being in the box. I have her next to me. Shadow, stay up on your perch. Shadow's getting a little bit warmed up. We talked before on our snake um, class that they're ectothermic. So the outside, he's getting warmed up. He's getting moving around, and so he's starting to move more. So by the end of this class, he's probably going to be off the table, and I might have to move him into a bin. Okay, so let's get started. Habitats. So. Welcome. We're going to talk about habitats. Now, habitats is a very broad, it's a lot, it's a big subject we could talk about for hours and hours and hours, but today we're just going to focus generally, or maybe I should say very broadly, on the concept of what a habitat is and more focused on animals and the animals that live in certain habitats, okay? So, for a definition, habitats the habitat definition is the natural home or environment of animals, plants, and organisms, okay? And bringing that right down, it's basically where things live, okay? That's the definition of a habitat. So it's not just specifically what they live in. So a lot of times when people say habitat, they're just like, they think in their head, oh, a bird's habitat is a nest. Not quite. The habitat is talking about all of those things combined. So not just the shelter, the nest a bird lives in, but also what the bird eats, where the bird gets water, and the space, the actual space that the bird needs to live, to live in, and to procreate in, to find a mate in. All of those things together make up a habitat. So we're going to talk about those things. We're going to talk about the different types of habitat, and uh, we're going to get right down into it. So I gave you the definition of habitat, and I kind of went over real quickly the four key elements that you need to make a habitat. And those are food, water, shelter, and space. Now when I say shelter, I mean protection from weather or predators. Shadow is crawling off the table. He's going into shelter into my sweatshirt. Um, and, and space. Uh, and that's just the space to obtain food and water and um, and to find a mate, all those things, you need enough space to do that. Depending on the type of animal, that space it varies, whether you need this much space or acres and acres of space, right? Okay. Shelly, calm down. It's almost your turn. You're first. So, like I said, there's a couple of, there's five categories that you can put uh, habitats into. And those categories, they're called biomes, okay? And so those biomes, they all share similar characteristics. And because they share similar characteristics, the animals and plants that live in them have to be able to adapt or change to those characteristics, okay? So first biome that we're going to talk about is aquatic, okay? Aquatic. So all includes all habitats around the world that are dominated by water. Now, this is the ocean is an obvious one, um, large rivers and all that stuff, seas, that type of thing, salty water, all that. But also, smaller biomes or smaller aquatic places like streams and ponds. So, if Shadow cooperates and stays where he's supposed to, we're going to talk a little bit about Shelly. Shelly! Shelly is our painted turtle. 
She's a very feisty lady right now. She's like, put me back into my habitat or into my shelter and enclosure. Um, so Shelly is a painted, Eastern painted turtle. She is semi-aquatic. She needs water to survive. She lives, and that's basically in broad strokes what defines an animal that needs to live in an aquatic biome. They need to live in water to survive, okay? So, Shelly, that's where she needs to live. She needs to be in water, so that's where she finds her food. So, she eats little fish, little bugs, anything that comes close to the water, that's what Shelly eats, anything she can basically get her mouth on. She's an omnivore, so she also can feed on plants. Um, water, obviously, she gets water from the water, the pond that she lives in. Shelly lives in ponds, slow-moving streams, shallow rivers, shallow lakes. She can also live in shallow lakes. Shelter. Now, for shelter, Shelly here, she's shedding a little bit. You can see that she's shedding. Um, for shelter, Shelly goes in under logs, um, under rocks, and she actually can shelter in the water. These guys have adapted to be able to like hold their breath, to say, underwater for like up to four hours, okay? They can slow down that respiratory rate and they can hide in the water. And that's how she protects herself. If she knows that there's a predator nearby, she's gonna go under the water and that shell of her that look, this, this bottom part of the shell that looks like a rock is gonna protect her from those predators. And then the bottom of her shell, that bright color right there, is gonna protect her from predators that are below the water. She also has these really cool webbed feet that, are good, that help her swim really, really, really fast. She's, so she's adapted to living in that water environment. Now, she also, for space for Shelly, these guys, they just need a, a nice little pond or a nice, you know, lake, shallow lake, like I said. But space is getting to be actually a bit of a problem for our eastern painted tur turtles. And that's because a lot of their habitats, a lot of these nice little ponds and aquatic habitats are either getting destroyed by people or polluted by people, but also they're getting invaded by invasive species, um, most uh, predominantly by red-eared box turtles. I'm going to show you guys a picture of, or sorry, red-eared uh, sliders. I'm going to show you guys a picture. So this guy right there, can you guys see it? Yeah. That guy, he looks very similar to our friend Shelly here, but not the same. He's a red-eared slider. You can get them at pet stores, and unfortunately, a lot of people, hello Shadow, get back in your spot. A lot of people have gotten them at pet stores, not realizing that they can grow twice the size as Shelly. Shelly's about, I'd say five and a half, six inches. They can grow to be about 12 inches long, and that's not the turtle maybe you signed up for. So then what do they do? They just release them out into the wild. And unfortunately, red-eared sliders, these guys, they live in the same places that Shelly and her friends do. Those Eastern, the Eastern uh, painted live in the same place. Sorry, I had to rescue Shadow here. He was going in and checking out Donatello. Um, so the issue with that though is that there's not enough space for all of them to live in the same areas. Red-eared sliders are a lot bigger. That means that they can kick out the uh, Eastern painteds and basically take over the food source for them. So not good, they can't, you know, really get along. They're not, they can't like breed together. They can't form a new species type thing. So what ends up happening is because there's not enough space, the Eastern painted turtles are kind of dying out a little bit. It's why that they are protected. You are allowed to have them as pets, but you're only allowed to have one. Um, and they really don't like you to have them as pets just because, you know, they, they're not, you know, they, we want to keep them in the wild as much as possible. But you might see them in pet stores, and if you see them in pet stores, that's fine because they were captive bred and everything. But, uh, yeah, so that's Shelly. She lives in our aquatic biome. Say hello to Shelly, everyone. Hi, Shelly. And so Shelly here, like I said, her space is kind of being run over by some invasives. But the cool thing about Shelly here at camp, she has her own little, you guys can kind of see it behind me right there. She has her own little aquatic biome right there. So she's in a 100-gallon tank. Um, and in that tank, she ha we feed her, so food she doesn't have to worry about. Um, we keep fresh water for her. And then also for shelter, she has rocks in there to hide under if she feels a little scared. And she also has a big log there. And also some a space that she can sun herself and bask, okay? So that's Shelly, everyone. Say hello. Say goodbye to Shelly. Okay, so 
So, aquatic. Now we're going to zoom through the next one. The next one is desert. Basically the opposite of aquatic. Uh, desert that desert biome is, you know, basically it doesn't rain much in the desert biomes, okay? So all the animals and plants that live there, they've adapted to not needing water all the time. So like cactuses, they, if it rains, they kind of soak in all the water they need. Um, same thing with the animals that live there. They either get their water from food that they eat or they, uh, they don't need as much water. Maybe they don't need like, you know, like a lot of the reptiles that live in a desert climate don't need a lot of water. But also the thing that not a lot of people think about desert climates uh, or desert biomes is the climate. It's not just hot. It's also these extreme temperatures. It can be really hot and then also pretty cold um, in the, at night. So that, that really big drastic change from day to night in the climate, that's a big thing for, uh, that's a big, uh, sorry, that's one of the main characteristics of a desert climate. So we're gonna move on to our next climate for our next creature and everything. So, tundra. We don't have any tundra animals here, but we are going to talk about a, a tundra animal. So, tundra is the main characteristic, the defining characteristic is low, low temperatures and very little precipitation or rain. Okay, so very low temperatures um, in, in the tundra, very cold temperatures, okay? So, and what that means is that these animals that live there have to adapt to these cold temperatures. And not only do they have to adapt, but they have to know how to raise their young and have like, you know, young in the short, short summer months because summer is over like that. So a really good example of a tundra is actually up in Alaska. A, a large portion of Alaska is tundra. And one of the creatures that we don't have this creature here, but a very cool creature that lives in the Alaskan tundra is this guy right there. Who knows what it is? You are correct. It's a grizzly bear. If that's what you said, if you said bear, I'll take it. It's a grizzly bear. And the grizzly bears that live up in Alaska are kind of a great example of a creature that has adapted so well to living in these harsh, harsh climates. And the reason why they're completely suited for up there, it, besides having that really thick, shaggy, let's show you again, that really thick, um, shaggy coat of hair, they have layers and layers of fat to insulate. Look at how big that guy or gal is. Uh, I can't tell. But yeah layers and layers of fat to help insulin. And then when winter comes, when the really, really cold temperatures comes, grizzly bears bed down in caves or in dens and they have leaves and sticks to kind of even further insulate them. Now, grizzly bears don't fully hibernate. They don't go to sleep and you can't, it's not that you can't wake them up or anything like that. They, 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 go, they definitely slow down their metabolism and slow down their systems, but they are still awake. And they do, you know, occasionally wander out to eat or drink and stuff like that. But during these really, really cold months is actually when they have their babies because that's when they're all safe and cozy in their dens. They have their babies. The babies drink the mom's milk, so that's what their nutrition is. And then once it gets warmer in those next couple of months, once it gets warmer, the babies are actually old enough to go out into those lower temperatures and fend for themselves a little bit. Of course, mom is still there. Grizzly bear cubs actually stay with their moms like for three years. But uh, yeah, so grizzly bears are such a cool animal that are found in the tundra biome. Look at those guys. Very cool, very, very scary. Um, so very scary if you come across one, I would say. Rules if you come across a grizzly bear, don't play dead. Uh, just uh, make a lot of noise, hope that they go away, or back up really, really slowly if they haven't seen you yet. If they've seen you, you might be a little bit of trouble. But grizzly bears, super, super cool. So our next biome, so we've talked about, we've talked about aquatic, desert, and tundra, okay? Now we're getting it's, it's your turn, man. It's your turn to shine. Now we're getting to grasslands, okay? Now, some of these creatures you might be thinking, especially with the grizzly bears, you might be like, hey, wait a second. Aren't there grizzly bears in Yellowstone? Yes, there are. Just because an animal is found in one biome doesn't mean it can't be found in another biome. That's just how they adapt. Some animals can adapt to different biomes. So Shadow here, come here, buddy. Shadow here is a great example 
of an animal that can, can adapt to all different sorts of habitats. Woo, he's saying hello to everyone. He's giving you guys a little sn sniff. Hello. So, shadow and snakes in general are really great at adapting. That's why they have so many different subspecies because the same type of snake, like a rat snake, can live in, in so many different places. So shadow, he can live in grasslands. He can live in forest areas. He can live in a lot of places. He can live on the mountainsides. You know, he can live a lot of places. So grasslands, they're mostly defined as large rolling terrains with grasses, flowers, and herbs. But they also have some trees in them, which is great for a rat snake because rat snakes, they mostly shelter up in trees. So shelter, that's one. They need some place to hide. So they can either hide in the grasses, those tall grasses from hawks or other predators that are out to get them, or they can hide up in trees. Uh, these guys are excellent climbers. You can see them on the side of a tree. They can just basically climb right up. They're super, super strong, as you can see. Um, and then, so for food, shadow eats, well, I should say, rat snakes eat warm-blooded small animals. I say warm-blooded because that is the type of animal they, they don't really tend to eat a lot of frogs or those types of things. They probably would, but it's not really what they go for. They go for mice, rats, uh, squirrels. Uh, this shadow rat snakes can get to be up to eight feet long. Um, so they can do birds as well. Like I said, they live up there in trees. So any small warm-blooded animal um, that he can fit his mouth around, he basically would uh, eat. And snakes can eat things that are like three times the size of their head. So pretty impressive. So we got shelter, we have food, water, snakes, they do need water. Um, I know they look a lot like they, you know, maybe wouldn't need that much water. It, it, a lot of times people think snakes and they kind of think desert a little bit, but everything needs water. Rat snakes in general do like water. They like to soak in water. They like to like crawl in there, take a little bath and everything. Um, it helps them, it helps them digest their food. Um, and also, you know, it helps them cool down a little bit because sometimes they can, if they're sitting in the sun all day, you know, they can get a little bit too warm. So they can go into uh, water and cool them down. Remember, they're ectothermic. So the only way that they can control their temperature is through their environment. So if it's really, really warm day, they're going to want to be in the shade or they want to find some water to cool them down. So that's them. And uh, yeah, and space. Cool thing about snakes is that, you know, when it comes to space, there's, they don't need too much space um, as long as they have the proper food and water um, and, and the proper nutrition in there. You know, you might see a snake in the same place. Hello. You might see a snake in the same place every time you walk past it because it's getting everything it needs there. And also, a small piece of land can actually support a lot of snakes because snakes don't need to eat very often. Snakes are opportunistic eaters. If they see something and they're hu and you know they haven't eaten and they're hungry, they're going to eat. Um, they're not going to let a meal go by, but really they don't need to eat. Snakes, these snakes here that we have, they might eat every seven to ten days. That's really kind of how we feed them, and that's really what they need to to grow nice and strong seven to ten days so that's not that many mice that's not that many squirrels so there's plenty to go around so space wise a lot of snakes can live in one place um awesome so that's snakes shadow i'm gonna move you over a little bit here just to i'm sorry i'm just gonna move you over okay there you go so our next biome so we've talked about aquatic we've talked about desert we've talked about tundra We've talked about grasslands, and now we're going to round it off and talk a little bit about forest biomes. Now, we're going to spend a little bit more time on the forest biomes because that's the biome that we have really up here. Now, we have a little bit of grassland, you can say that, but farmland really isn't grassland here, but uh, it's a different type of beast, but you can say that. But really, the forests that are all around us, that's the type of biome that we want to talk about here in Pennsylvania. Um, now, there's a couple of different types of forests. There's boreal, there's um, rainforest, that's, that's the popular forest that a lot of people know. But the type of forest that you can find here in your own backyard is the temperate forest. And temperate forest, you know, basically means that there are four distinct seasons that happen in that forest. Okay, and the growing months, the time that plants can grow, that just started, you know, about, actually a month ago, it really started uh, in March. Um, 
that lasts for over half the year. So the growing season is really, really long, about 140 to, well, I guess it could be 140 to 200 days. So, um, but you know, that's what kind of defines a temperate forest. So forests, obviously trees, you need trees to have a forest and then a temperate forest, they have four distinct seasons that you can tell from, okay? So let's get out our friend here. Wait one second, guys. I gotta put Shelly back. She's driving me crazy. She just keeps, everyone say goodbye to Shelly. She's gonna go back into her little home right here because she uh, keeps trying to get out of her little home. So there you go, lady. There you go. Okay, so. So our temperate forests or our forest climates, let me find our little home. So if you see, I have our little friend in this bowl full of uh, grasses and clovers and everything. And that's just for him to burrow around him, find his own little way. But now I have to find him in here. Um, so Donatello, like I said, is a box turtle. There he is. Found you. Sorry, buddy. So, there he is. Isn't he cute? So, Donatello, three-toed box turtle. Um, but box turtles in general, they like to live in forest areas and some grasslands. They can also be found in grasslands. But the really important part about his little habitat is the climate, okay? So turtles in general, they need to have, well, not in general, but turtles for box turtles in general, I should say, need to have a really humid climate, okay? And humidity is really important. So really high humidity, actually. They need to have, so it needs to be nice and, I'm using this word I don't really use often, moist. They need to have a really nice, moist climate. Um, and the reason for that is because that's a lot of times how they get their water. They get their water. They don't usually go up to water and just dip their heads in and drink. A lot of times they just drink the water that kind of comes down from their head, like that, like, you know, the moisture or the dew that like sits on their head that drips down and stuff. That's really what they kind of end up drinking. Um, they don't, you won't usually see a turtle just putting its face in the water and taking a gulp. You'll see a snake do that. Snakes definitely do that. But for turtles, it's usually the water that drips off of them or water that they get from the things that they eat. That's how they get their water. So water, very, very important for box turtles. Now food, these little guys are omnivores. So they need to eat, you know, bugs, slugs, worms, Plant, they also eat plants and berries and those types of things. And where do those things happen? They happen on the forest floor. So they couldn't, so box turtles couldn't live in the desert because it's really hard to find a good juicy worm in the desert. So they need that forest, that rich soil that also defines forest biomes, that rich nutrient soil. They need that to find all their food sources. Now, food and water, we went over those. Let's talk about shelter. Shelter for these guys, now they hide in a lot of places, especially when they're young. Um, they're, they're very, very good hiders. As you can see, I couldn't even find them in these uh, little grasses, and it's just a bowl of grass. So that just says what they kind of need. For when they're small, they definitely can hide basically anywhere, under rocks, um, in tall grasses, under a leaf, that type of thing. But when they get a little larger, they actually burrow. So they do dig under the ground, and that's how they... Uh, hide from predators and that's also how they manage their temperature so like we said before reptiles turtles are also reptiles um they manage their temperature they're ectothermic so they have to control their temperature through their environment right that's how they do it there he is hi guys so if they get too hot they might burrow under the soil and get away from the sun also if it's too cold they might burrow really really deep and get below that frozen point. That's how a lot of tur that is how turtles survive through the winter. If these guys were out and about, it's you never see a turtle just walking on the snow. You're not going to. They're gonna burrow down into that rich nutrient soil and stay down there below that frost point and slow down their breathing, slow down their respiratory, and they basically go into hibernation. It's called brumation for turtles. But they go into brumation and they wait there until those first flowers start popping up and then they pop up. So shelter wise, that's what they need. They need something to hide under and they need, you know, that nice rich soil and diggable earth. Okay. So food, water, 
shelter, and the fourth one is space. So how much space do these guys actually need, right? So remember, space means space to obtain food, water, and to find a mate, okay? So that's really the definition of space when we're talking about habitats. Now, the cool thing about three-toed box turtles, well, I'll first say, box turtles in general usually have about a football-sized field of territory. That's the space they live in. That's as much space as they need, you know, um, if they find a mate in there, great. If they don't, ugh, oh well, I guess they're not going to have a mate. That's, a, that's one reason why we don't see a lot of box or why box turtles are actually near endangered because a lot of box turtles are disappearing. So if box turtles can't find each other in their football size field of territory, then they're out. Of so, um, so our little boxer, sorry, our internet just flashed a second there. I hope you guys can still see me. Okay, cool. So. Our friend was getting away. Okay, so box turtles again. So now the cool thing about three-toed box turtles is that they break those rules. They do not, they do not need that football-sized stadium. They actually box these three-toed box turtles actually travel. Hello, shadow. They actually tra travel with the humidity, which is really cool. So they actually migrate, um, kind of, almost like birds do. Three-toed box turtles have been known to leave from the central part of America, where they usually are, down in the Midwest area. Um, and they actually travel with the humidity. So once it starts to get colder and everything, they start moving south so that they can stick with that sun and stick with that nice, moist air. So that's a really, really cool thing about three-toed box turtles, which, which is why they're not endangered. They're not as endangered. They're not as in... Um, they're available to have as pets and everything, unlike eastern box turtles that don't move a lot. So that's the cool thing about our little box turtle friends there. So, everyone, say goodbye to our little Superman Donatello. Focus, 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 focus. There he is. He's Superman. He's flying for you guys. Okay, we'll put him back. Awesome. So, to recap about habitat. Habitats are where things live, the natural world and environment that animals, plants, and organisms live in. And those habitats can kind of be categorized into five categories. And those are desert, aquatic, tundra, grasslands, and forest. Around us, we mostly have grasslands. We could argue that we also have some, uh, sorry, we mostly have forests but we could argue that we also have some grasslands. Um, and, you know, but a lot of the characteristics of grasslands and forests can be a little bit similar. So that's really cool. Um, the biggest thing though to keep in mind is that us as people, we also have a habitat, right? And we are highly adaptable because for us, if the weather is bad, we just put on more clothes. It's why we can live in so many different places and everything, which is really, really cool. But the one not so cool thing is because we keep living in all these places that some of our animal friends habitats are disappearing, which is why it's really cool that we do have these protections. We have wildlife sanctuaries that protect wetlands, which are, you know, just marshes and everything because a really cool bunch of uh, creatures live in that type of ecosystem. So I would say if you guys have the time, which a lot of us do right now, um, if you have the time. Check out some of these uh, biomes. Look it up online and everything. See what type of animals live there. Another really fun activity is to make up an animal all on your own. Just make up an animal, whatever it is. Take a cross between a turtle, a snake, and a grizzly bear. Make an animal and then decide what type of biome it lives in and decide what it's going to eat, what, it's type of, what type of food it's going to, and draw it out. It's a great activity for our younger campers and everything to do. So make up that animal and then decide what type of biome it lives in and what four key elements it needs to survive. So that's all the time we have for today. Um, join us again tomorrow at 10 o'clock with Rich, I believe. I believe that's with Rich. Um, so at 10 o'clock and 4 o'clock for our next online classes. Um, and excuse us for some of our classes are somewhat a little bit late in the mornings and that's just because we're working with a lot of people outside of camp which is really exciting so that means that we get to see a lot of different faces not just 
my face all the time with the animals. So, have a good one, guys. Um, enjoy the rest of your week. Enjoy the sunshine while, while it lasts here for the rest of today. And uh, we'll see you next time on the mountain. Okay?